Rachel Perkins, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. The tone of your Boyer lectures is so gracious and hopeful. From where does the source of your hope spring? Well, I think um, it's so easy to have conflict. You know, we see it all around the world. It's polarising um, through social media and politics. And I think in Australia, you know, we need to try and bring people together. And I have great hope for that because I think you've got to be hopeful. There's no room for cynicism, particularly in Indigenous affairs. So, yeah, I, I want to give hope to people of possibilities. Absolutely. One of the things you note in your first lecture is that while governments of both stripes have delayed on reforms and broken promises and chopped and changed on policy, the aspirations of Indigenous Australians have remained remarkably consistent for four decades. What are those aspirations? Yeah, look, I think that's important for people to note because often there's criticism towards Indigenous people, like we get something and then we ask for something else and then we ask for something else. But actually Indigenous people since actually the 1970s, early 1970s, have asked for three things. That is a voice for the people to, you know, talk about policy issues and have an influence on policies that affect them and laws um, and, and a treaty. Um, people have asked for a resolution to the original sort of claiming of Australia and the results of that, some sort of what we call makarara in a Yolongu word. Um, so those are the two things that have been consistent and then some sort of participation in the parliamentary process. And that's changed, you know, over the years. But recently in the constitutional recognition movement, that's become a voice to parliament um, and people would like it to be enshrined in the constitution. So there's a guarantee that those voices will be heard. There was a suggestion when the Uluru Statement from the Heart came out that the voice to Parliament it requests would be a kind of third chamber. In what way was that an inaccurate characterisation? Well, look, I think it was, you know, um, a bit mischievous to characterise it as a third chamber because that was never on the table. I mean, what is clear is that Indigenous people have already special laws made about them. Under 5126, which is a section of the Constitution, it's called the race power, um, you can make laws, as Parliament has, specifically to Indigenous people. So what people want is the opportunity to comment, to give advice to Parliament when those laws are made. So that's... That's all it is. It's advice to Parliament. Parliament doesn't have to accept that advice. It's just offered by Indigenous people. So actually what we're asking for is it's, it's almost so modest that it's embarrassing. You know, we're asking for the opportunity to give advice when laws are made about us. We want to make a change in Indigenous lives. For too long we've been at the bottom of this social heap. Something's got to change. And we think that the Uluru Statement from the Heart gives us a pathway towards that change. Why, when that seems, as you say, like not that much, is it so difficult to make happen? Uh, look, I think um, a lot of the political commentary that's happened around the Uluru Statement from the Heart has misled people. And so it's said things like, we're going to make Australians unequal. You know, and those sort of things Australians don't respond to well because we're proud of the equality of our country, democracy, and uh, so people get anxious when it seems like we're putting in things that make give Indigenous people advantage. One of the things that you're asking Australians is, are your hearts big enough to acknowledge the first Australians in our founding documents? For ordinary um, Australians who think... Yes, I am prepared to do that. It's just common sense. Um, but they don't have power or money or connections or know any politicians or know any business leaders or anything like that. Just the average person who might be watching this show tonight. How can they back Indigenous Australians in this? Look, it's a really good question because people often ask, what can I do? Um, there will be a process of co-design for this voice. That will take a year and then the government will decide how they deal with that. Ultimately, we would like constitutional enshrinement of that voice so that it's guaranteed in the future. And to change the constitution, as we know, Australians will have to vote on that. So, you know, we'd ask Australians to consider that at referendum if we get there. But the other thing is there's three parts to the Uluru Statement. There is the voice to parliament, uh, guaranteed through constitutional recognition. There's truth-telling and then there's an agreement-making process. Certainly the truth-telling part is something for all Australians. I mean, we really have to come to terms with the foundation of our country. You know, Germany has, the US has, Australia, you know, New Zealand has. We, we really are in denial about what happened in this country. You speak um, frequently in the Boyer Lectures about your father, Charlie Perkins, great Australian and, and advocate. How has his life um, and influence on you influenced your thinking on these issues? 
Well, I think um, my dad, very early on in life, he had a kidney transplant, which a lot of people don't know about him. And, um, and I think that really gave him a sense of, well, okay, what are you going to do with your time on earth, you know? And he wanted to, you know, he loved Australia and he felt very passionate about his people. You know, he grew up in a native institution. You know, he saw the segregation, he fought for it in the freedom right. He spent his life working to change the country. And I saw him change things. And so that's very inspiring to have around you, seeing what a person can do and like, oh, you can change the world or you can change your country. So I, I suppose I'm trying in my own way with my filmmaking and um, to try and, you know, to, to make Australia the country that it can be, you know, because we love our country. It's beautiful. That's the thing that draws us together. So we want to make it great for everyone in this country and particularly Indigenous people who, you know, have that deep heritage. We want to improve our lives as well. So, you know, that's, it's, we're still on that journey and we need our fellow Australians, you know, to be with us on that because we can't do it on our own. Rachel Perkins, thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.